Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this video, we're going to use primitives to create a really basic piece of furniture. Thank you all so much for subscribing and hitting the notification icon. It really helps me out to know how many people want to see my content. Also, a big thank you to all of my patrons. Your support means just so much to me. If you're interested in supporting the channel, the link to Patreon is in the description below. So let's jump right into this then. We've got here an empty scene and what we need to do is we need to start off by creating a primitive. We're going to create very simply a cylinder like so and we're going to set the length to about a meter and the diameter is going to need to be 0 0.01 like so. And when we hit accept we see a really really thin stick basically. <laughs> And all we're going to do is we're going to select that stick and we're going to create some node instances of it. So we're going to create and we're going to create new node instances and we need three. So we're going to hit accept like so. And now what we've got there is four separate sticks all based on the first one. So any changes we make to the material properties or size or shape of the first one will impact the other four at the same time, which is very useful. I think you will agree. First thing we want to do is create our tabletop. We're going to create a primitive and we're going to create a cube like so. Size, we're going to have it as two meters. Divisions, we're going to have it as one. We don't need to worry about having it anymore at this precise moment in time. So we're just going to hit accept like so. So now we've got a massive cube, but of course this is no use to us as a table. So we're going to select cube and we're going to have to make some adjustments to the scale. Now I want it to be two meters along the X axis. So we don't need to adjust the X scale at all. What we need to do is change the Z scale to 50%. So we've got a nice one meter across table. And then on the Y scale, we only want it to be kind of an inch. So we're going to drop it down to 2% and see what we have in terms of thickness. I see that as being not too bad. Maybe I want to drop it down a little bit more. It's only going to be a thin table like so. Yeah. Yeah, let's just say 1%. There we go. Perfect. Now we need to raise this up, uh, but we don't need to guess for this one because we know that our legs are exactly one meter tall. So we have to just put in 100 on the Y axis. And then if we were to drop into front view, you can see that the legs meet up with the bottom of the plane perfectly. Marvelous, I know what you're thinking. So now we're gonna select our legs one at a time. We're gonna start off with the main one. And rather than guessing on position, we're going to say that I want it to be 10 centimeters from the X and the Y ends. So we need to make this 90 and we need to make the Z translate. It's going to be 40, I want to say. No, that's 10. That's no good. That's not what I said, is it? I wanted 40. So we're going to quickly just look and check that that's in the right position. So yeah, bang on. So the next leg that we're going to select is also going to be 90 along on the X axis, but obviously that needs to be minus 40 because it's on the other side of the Z zero plane. Marvelous. So our next leg, we're going to select and we're going to set this one to minus 90 on the X axis. And this one's also going to be minus 40. And then our last leg, if we just select that, it's going to be minus 90 along the X axis, but it's going to be plus 40 on the Z axis. And as we look around, there you go, our really simple table. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is rename our primitives. So this one is going to be a table top like that. And then we're going to rename this one just as a leg and then we're going to parent 
all of the instances to the main leg and then we're going to parent the leg to the tabletop like so and then when we select our table we're going to move everything at the same time with it like this the next thing we want to do is make sure that we don't accidentally click on one of the legs and move it around so we're going to turn off the clickability of the leg and its instances by clicking on the mouse icon next to each of them this just means that we can only select the tabletop the main object and then move it around so it just means that we don't accidentally misalign the legs or something wacky like that now what we want to do is just give these things a different color just so make it look a bit more interesting so while we've got the tabletop selected we're going to go to our surfaces tab and we're going to go to base we're going to change our base color and i'm going to just give this a nice kind of peachy kind of color that's not peach is it that's beige that's a peach color yes there we go so a nice peach color for our tabletop and then we only have to select the one leg and when we go to base we're going to change that to kind of a blue metallic -y kind of blue and as you can see the color of the other four instances has changed along with it which is v useful i think you will agree now what we're going to do is this table just looks kind of dull on its own so we are going to create another plane and it's going to be a plane like that a new primitive sorry and we're going to be I'm going to make this 1.5 meters and divisions I'm going to give it 300 and we're going to say accept we're going to select our plane and we're going to shift it up come into our top view just so that we can see and we're going to make some adjustments to it in the scale so I want it to be kind of longer along the x the z axis a bit and shorter along the x kind of there like so perfect and we only need to have it just resting very very slightly above the tabletop there perfect in fact now do you know what? i'm going to raise it a little bit more just to give it a bit more of a funky effect i'm going to give it a new color going into the plane like this gonna give it a i'm going to give it a hmm, we've got blue and red let's go with a yellow a kind of a yellowy tabletop there we go like that now we're going to go to edit object geometry add deforce modified dynamic surface and we're going to hit that simulate button in the simulation settings lovely and now as you can see it's not perfectly aligned either side of the table and it does look kind of weird being frozen like that so what we can do is we can go back to our simulation and we can change the gravity to 1.1 just to speed up the in the effect a little bit more and then initialization time is fine but the duration when we go into that we're going to change the stabilization time to three seconds like that and then we're going to go to clear and we're going to raise it up just a little bit more just to kind of try and give it an opportunity to wrinkle as it comes down just so that it doesn't land perfectly flat and with that second simulation running you can see it's just it, it's still not perfect but it does hang a little bit there's this very slight bit of wrinkling around the shape at the bottoms of there and if you wanted to increase that you could make some adjustments to the fabric settings or the environment but we're just looking for something really basic here so we come back into our scene tab we can rename this as our table cloth and again we can turn off its clickability and parent it to the tabletop and then that just means that we're never actually going to accidentally click on the tablecloth and move it around so if we were to just very quickly look at our extremely sexy table in nvidia iron mode there you go nice and simple really basic but useful if you need a table in a fix i hope you found this useful let me know what you think in the comments below and i'll see you in the next one thanks very much bye bye Thank uh you. -huh.